Yeah, I think this game between Leinster and Northampton tomorrow at Croke Park is going to be an absolute cracker. There's going to be over 80,000 people at Croke Park and I think that's an exciting thing in itself and there's so much history in that ground. Leinster's playing really well this year, so is Northampton. So I think it's going to be an absolute bonzer game. So uh, looking forward to it very much as a Kiwi, that's for sure. G'day everyone and welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. My name's Mark, I'm a Kiwi rugby fan who's living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And in today's video I'm going to talk about the preview show for the game between Leinster and the Northampton Saints that's being played tomorrow at Croke Park in Ireland and it's going to be an amazing game of rugby, we're sure of that. I've got the two teams for you today, going to talk about those and I'm going to give you my prediction as well for the game. So let's get right into it. And I've been looking forward to this one for a couple of weeks now since we've known who we're going to be in the semi-finals of this year's Investec Champions Cup. And it's a really exciting game for a Kiwi to look at this because it just shows the level of rugby that's being played in Europe, in particular in the UK at the moment. And uh, it's a very, very good standard. I've been very, very impressed with Leinster this year, as I have been over the last couple of years as well. But Northampton's playing well this year. Both teams have won all their games in the Champions Cup so far. But the one thing we've got to remember that after the, out of the last 10 times that these two teams have met, Leinster have won nine of those games and Northampton only won. So is that going to be a factor in tomorrow's game? I'll get into that more in the video. So before I get into predictions and all of that stuff, why don't we start off having a look at the two teams and let's start off with the visitors, which is going to be the Northampton Saints. And we'll start off having a look at their back line. And it's a pretty interesting back three for me. They've got Furbank, Ram and Hendy uh, in the back three. And I think this is going to be a really good back three for them. I'm going to talk about the omissions of, from the two teams and how that could possibly impact them after I've gone through the two teams. So hang in there for that. Now inside those guys we've got Freeman and Dingwall who are going to be playing in the midfield and uh, both playing really really well. I think Freeman's had a good year this year but so has Dingwall so look for him in getting opportunities to break through the Leinster defence which I think is going to be one of the most difficult things for Northampton to do in this game. And then in the inside we've got Smith at number 10 and we've got Mitchell at number 9 at halfback and that's uh, a pretty good combination there for Northampton. How that's going to compare to the Leinster 9 and 10, I'll talk about that as well throughout this video. And then if we have a look at the uh, substitutes in the backs for Northampton in this game, we've got James Litchfield and Seabrook. So three good reserves to come on there. Seabrook's been playing well this year, as has James. And uh, there's going to be a great opportunity for those guys to come on. So a good back line for Northampton. Does it match up to Leinster's? I'll talk about that when we get to the Leinster team. Now let's have a look at the Northampton forwards and see what pack they're putting out there on the field this weekend. Bit of a movement for them. They've got Augustus at number eight. Graham's coming into the open flanker position and Courtney Laws is going to be the other one. Laws is going to be the captain this weekend for this particular game. Then inside them in the locking position we've got Coles and Moon. They need to target a lot of good quality ball for the Northampton team and I think that's going to be an area where they might struggle against their Leinster counterparts. I'll go through that when I get to the Leinster team. And then in the front row we've got Davison, Langdon and Waller for Northampton. A good front row but they're up against it aren't they against the Irish trio for the Leinster team. So there could be some potential struggle there for the Northampton forwards. And then we've got Mayanavanua, uh, Matavisi, Miller Mills and Yeogon as the reserves for the Saints. Not only are they difficult names to uh, pronounce, they're also difficult blokes to bring down. So expect those Northampton Saints bench forwards to make an impact when they come on. And I think this is going to be one of the most interesting aspects of the game. Who's going to have the strongest bench? Who's going to have the biggest impact from that bench when they come on the field? So there's the Saints. 
So it's a really good team the Saints are putting out this weekend. Uh, how good it's going to be against this Leinster team. Why don't we go over and check out the Leinster team right now and I can give you my thoughts around that. So at the back for the uh, Leinster team, the back three, we've got uh, Frawley, Armour and James Lowe, of course. And uh, James Lowe's probably been one of the players of the year so far this year. Not only is he good in defence, but he's got that left foot kick that gets Leinster and Ireland out of a lot of trouble at times. He can find a lot of distance. He can clear well with that left foot kick. It's gone wrong a couple of times so far in the competition, but overall, James Lowe, I think, has been one of the players of the series, that's for sure. Armour brings something different uh, on the other wing, and Frawley at fullback is Mr. Consistent as well. Again, I'll talk about those players that are going to be missing out of this game and what potential impact that could have. Now moving on into the centres for Leinster this weekend, we've got Henshaw and Osborne. I've spoken in previous videos about how impressed I've been with Osborne. I think he's going to be a really great player for Leinster and for Ireland in the future. He's a young guy that's got a lot of talent. He knows how to break the line. He's hungry going looking for the ball. And I think his defence is pretty good as well. It's probably an area of his game that he could improve a little bit. But I think uh, overall this Osborne guy is an exciting player for Leinster. I expect him to have a big game on Saturday. Now inside those guys we've got Ross Byrne and Gibson Park of course. A great 9-10 combination. Ross Byrne I think has been playing pretty well. I think kicking is going to be important in this game. Both in general play but also over the sticks. And uh, Ross Byrne is going to be wanting to get a high percentage of his penalties and conversions over in this particular game. Gibson Park, another one who's been playing fantastic this season, both for Ireland and for Leinster. Expect him to have a big game and expect him to be one of the generals in this Leinster team that helped them get around the field. So watch out for him having a really good game. Now why don't we have a look at the Leinster pack and see uh, who's coming out to play with them for them. And uh, boy, what an impressive uh, pack it is for Leinster. The back three, of course, Doris, Van der Fleer and Beard. And uh, what, a, what a back three. That could be in any national team around the world and they'd be pretty good. Kalen Doris is going to be the captain of the Leinster team this week from number eight. And then moving into the locks for Leinster in this game, we've got Joe McCarthy and Maloney, two huge guys. And McCarthy, again, one of those players that's been playing outstanding this season. Watch for him in the breakdown area. I think he's been doing some really fantastic work so far in the Champions Cup and also in other Leinster games where he's been getting in there and stealing the ball in the breakdown procedure. And I think that's going to be an important part of this game and expect Joe McCarthy to be one of those players that's playing a big game in that area. Then moving into the front row for Leinster, of course, we've got the Irish front row of Furlong, Porter and Sheehan. And boy, what a great front row this is. So this is where an area of the game I think it's going to be really important to determine who's going to win this game. The set piece, the strength of this uh, Leinster pack I think is going to show over the course of the 80 minutes because they've also got reserves they can bring on to really, really make a difference against the Saints. So I'm expecting this uh, Leinster pack to have it over the, uh, the pack from the Saints and uh, particularly in set pieces, line outs and also in the scrums. Now having a look at the reserve forwards for Leinster in this game, we've got Callagher, Healy, Alawatoa, Jenkins and Conan. So Jenkins coming back in from injury, good to see him getting back into the team on the bench as well. Now a couple of players in the Saints side that aren't there that I think they're going to miss a lot and the first one is Lewis Ludlam for the Saints, he's out with a shoulder injury. He's a huge player for the Saints team and I think they're going to really miss him over the course of the 80 minutes. The other one they're going to miss is Ollie Slightholm who's out of this game as well due to a concussion protocol that he's going through at the moment. That's a bit of sad news. He's been playing extremely well. He was great in their quarterfinal game and he's a guy that can score tries from anywhere. So I think the Saints are really going to miss Ollie Slightholm in this game and one of the other reasons they're going to miss him is because that Leinster defence, that rush defence is so good and they're going to need a player like Slightholm to get through it. I'm not too sure whether the other guys are going to be able to do it, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, I think that the Saints are going to miss Ollie Slightholm in this game and as I said Courtney Laws is going to be the captain of the Saints this weekend so a great uh, honour for Courtney Laws to take up the captainship of the Saints this weekend.
You know, I think another thing to watch in this game is for the Saints is that Sam Graham's moving to the uh, open side flank for this game. It's going to be interesting to see what impact he has there. And uh, the midfield as well, Freeman and Dingwall together in this game. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I think Freeman's been playing in particular very good rugby this year. So it's going to be good to see how that combination goes without slight home in there for this particular game. Now moving over to Leinster and a couple of things that have happened on their side. We've got no Gary Ringrose and we've got no Hugo Keenan in this game outstanding players in their own right and of course they've both been uh, hampered by injury throughout this season and it's been a big call both for Ireland and also for Leinster. To date they've been able to accomplish things without those two guys. I think that'll be the case again today but it's a shame we're not getting to see Gary Ringrose and Hugo Keenan in this particular game. Also for Leinster, Will Connors misses out in this game. He, he's been playing in previous games but he's not in the squad this weekend. Josh Vanderfleer, of course, coming back and starting in this particular game. So Leinster have really notched it up as far as the calibre of player in this game. And uh, unfortunate for Will Connors, but I'm sure he's going to get his opportunities in the future. So other good news in this game for Leinster is Jimmy O'Brien, the utility back, is on the bench for this game. Of course, he missed the whole Six Nations competition, which was a bit sad for him. And it's good to see him getting an opportunity. So he'll be back in at some stage during this game. Okay, so time for predictions from me on this big game tomorrow at Crow Park. And look, I can't see past Leinster for this one. As I said, uh, the Northampton Saints have only beaten Leinster once out of the last 10 games. They've played at each other. We're going to be in front of 80-odd thousand people at Croke Park. And if that doesn't get Leinster motivated and inspired, I'm not sure what's going to. But I just think they've got too much class, both in the backs and the forwards. This Leinster team, they're playing exceptionally well. They've had a week off or so in terms of uh, dealing with any niggling injuries they might have and just to freshen up. So I'm sure they've gone hard at training this weekend. And no matter what the conditions are at Croke Park tomorrow, because we are expecting a little bit of rain, I think Leinster's going to be able to handle it better than the Northampton Saints. As I've said in many previous videos, any team that's going to have to beat Leinster is going to score more than 30 points. And I can't see the Northampton Saints getting through this Leinster defence enough times to be able to do that. And I don't think there's going to be enough kicking opportunities in this game for them to rack up enough penalties to get them there as well. So I'm calling now a Leinster win, a comfortable Leinster win. I'm expecting them to win by 15 to 18 points in this game at Croke Park tomorrow. I think they're just going to have too much class for this Northampton Saints team. So let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen tomorrow at Croke Park. No matter what it is, it's going to be a fantastic game. Also, let me know in the comments if you're actually going to be there in person tomorrow because you'll make me hugely jealous. I would love to be at Croke Park tomorrow as a Kiwi setting, watching these two teams go head to head. They both played very well up until now in the Champions Cup. This is the big game. This is the one that's going to get them into the final. So it's going to be really interesting to see who turns up on the day and who's able to execute their game plan. I'm sure Leo Cullen and Jacques Ninaba have it all sorted out on how they're going to take on this Northampton Saints team. It's going to be interesting to see whether they can deliver. I think they can do so. Okay, that's it for this video. Of course, don't forget, I'm going to be back after the game with a full review give you my player rating, let you know how I think they went, and uh, we'll look at all the details of the game as well. So if you do want to stick around for that and you'll enjoy my content, why not hit the subscribe button, follow along this channel. I was thinking this morning, I was talking to the wifey and I was telling her, I think I'm the oldest guy on YouTube that's making a channel on rugby. So there we go, there's a reason to support me. I'm sure you'll tell me if I'm not as well, so there we go. Okay everyone, enjoy the rugby tomorrow, it's going to be a fantastic game. I'll see you after the game and don't forget to check out my preview show on the other game that's happening this weekend, the other semi-final between Toulouse and Harlequins. That's going to be an awesome game as well. Check that out on my channel. Until next time, stay safe, stay well everyone and I'll see you again really soon from here in Mexico. Until then, bye for now.